Team 10 is getting results. We have a follow up on the app called Chime. It is marketed as an easy and simple online banking experience, but some customers told Team 10 that when they had problems with their accounts, the company just simply didn't help. Well, that changed after our Team 10 investigator, Melissa Masiha, got involved. She shows us how the new response from Chime and, and what one senator is saying about growth of financial technology. This is a follow up I'm happy to report. I introduced you to Nicholas Traub last week. In September, his Chime account was drained more than $3,000 gone. Chime denied his claim. A spokesperson told me they audited his account twice and stood by their decision. But after we aired our story, he got that money back. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. An overjoyed Nicholas speaking to me on Zoom in Wisconsin as he visited family over the holidays. I can't possibly thank you enough. I mean, if I was there, I'd give you a big hug right now. <laughs> we'll do a, a virtual one right now. Last week, I told you about the money he raised for the funeral of his girlfriend, Margaret Galiniak. Money he put in his Chime account. Actually, all his money was with Chime. Financial aid, my Pell Grant, my money for my job and the money I was putting towards the funeral services, the money people had given me to help support us. State regulators say Chime is what's called a neobank that uses financial technology or fintech to operate, primarily in the digital space. They add it's not a bank and rules are less stringent than traditional banks. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau showed more than 1,400 complaints about Chime from January 2020 to late October. Many have posted stories on social media of losing their money placed in Chime accounts. Rob Young created one of those online groups. First and foremost, you, you feel violated, you know, like you, you trust them to handle your money. Chime now getting the attention of Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown. Come to order. He chairs the U.S. Senate Committee on Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs. This past summer, he sent a letter to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's acting director at the time, pressing him to address the risks of Chime. I contacted him for an update. In a statement, Senator Brown said, from privacy concerns to fraud to hidden fees to making sure these companies tell the public that they're not actually banks, there's a wide range of issues I'm working with the Biden administration and my colleagues in Congress to address. He said big banks are leaving too many people out of the financial system, forcing them to turn to fintechs that claim to make banking easier and cheaper. However, the senator believes fintechs lack real consumer protections and end up putting people's money at risk. Nicholas showed me the email Chime sent him, saying their investigation revealed an error occurred. On November 19th, less than 24 hours after my story aired, Chime put the money back in his account, $3,148.45. He credited my account and they apologized. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just like the best possible best possible result. The other San Diegan I interviewed said he hadn't heard back about his account, but they hope their stories help others make an informed decision about where to put their money. You guys are angels. I mean, the good you do is not just just to me and my family and to Margaret's family, but also to everyone that sees the news, that sees the story. If you ever have issues with banking apps like Chime, here in California, you can file a complaint online with the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. The state regulator also recommends contacting the bank that the financial technology company partners with. Lastly, Team 10, we're always working for you. If there is an issue you want us to look into, you can contact us as well. I'm Melissa Masiha, Team 10. Today,